Amen. Good morning and welcome to the Sunday School service of the Church of God. We thank the Lord for this blessed privilege to share His Word with you. Our, the title of our lesson today is Restitution. Scriptures will be drawn from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10, Leviticus chapter 6, verse 4, Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24, and our memory verse in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 15. Almighty Father in heaven, we thank you for the love and the grace that you have given to us, the privilege to live, to breathe, and to worship you. We thank you for the time and the place to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we are humbly asking that you may bless us with your presence. Now, Father, may you stand in our midst, may you grant us the wisdom from your mind and from your Holy Spirit, that we may see your light, see your will, that we may be able to follow after you, that we may be enlightened, that we may come to understanding. And Father, we pray that you may guide your speaker to speak only your mind and your will that it may be a strength and an encouragement to everyone listening, that they may only see you, and that they may follow after you. Father, we thank you for all the blessings. This we humbly pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The aim of our lesson today is to show that true repentance is followed by restitution. Restitution is defined as a restoration of something to its rightful owner. So it is giving back something that was stolen, something that was taken from someone. And this does not have to be limited to, a, to an object. It can also be the taking of someone's innocence or integrity by false accusations. So in restitution, we can restore someone's integrity and innocence by telling the truth, by correcting our statements. And so this, this study is mostly directed to the restoring of something to our fellow man, the giving back of something. But I also want you to keep in mind that we can also make restitution to the Lord. For we, when we were in sin, have taken something from the Lord, and we need to be able to restore it to Him. For in sin, we have we have stolen from the Lord. If you are still in sin, you are stealing from God. Because God has given us life to be able to live in this world. And He did not create us that we may live in unrighteousness, that we may live in sin. But He has created us for His glory. Created us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. So it is now time to return to God this life that is rightfully His, to return to God, to give Him our time, to give Him our strength, our efforts for His gospel, to give to God the rightful use of our lives. So we pray that you may be encouraged today that the Lord may guide you to be able to restore something if you have taken anything from anyone. To guide you to knowledge, to understanding that you may be acceptable to the Lord. So let us begin in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 4. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus 
which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the crowd because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into, into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. So here in Luke chapter 19 we have a story of Zacchaeus and Jesus. And Jesus Christ, as we know, went around preaching and teaching the gospel. And many followed after him, for they heard his truth, and their hearts were touched, for they heard a different message from this man. God in the flesh taught nothing but truth, touching people's hearts. And so we have a character in Zacchaeus, who was described here was a chief among the publicans. In other words, he was a chief among the tax collectors. And the tax collectors were not liked very much in the time, in the times of Jesus. For they worked for the Roman government, collecting taxes, and they were not the most honest people. For in collecting taxes, they could also collect more than what they needed for themselves. So they were cheats, they were liars. And we do not know if he became rich because of his job or, he, or if he was already rich. But Zacchaeus was a chief of the tax collectors and he was a rich man. But this is not the defining characteristic of Zacchaeus. For we see that though he was rich, Though he did not know Christ, he desired to know Him, because he has heard the stories about Christ, and he wanted to see Him for himself. But Zacchaeus could not see, for he was little in stature. Zacchaeus Zacchaeus was a little man, a small man. And there was many people around Jesus, but that did not stop him from seeing Christ, from wanting to see Christ. So we see that this soul has a de determination to see Christ, to want to get to know Him. Because through word of mouth, this man heard of Jesus Christ in his teachings, heard of his gospel, heard of his miracles. And it is a blessing to anyone who will desire to see God, to see his truth with as much determination as Zacchaeus here did. That he did all that he could to see Jesus. So though he, though the crowd was many around Jesus Christ, he tried to see him. He ran up a tree. He climbed a tree that he may be able to see him. He did everything he could. And so we are encouraged today to seek the kingdom of God, to seek Jesus Christ, seek your salvation. Amen. For Jesus has promised that if you seek, you shall find. Amen. That if you show the Lord your determination to seek Him, to find the truth, He will find it. You will not be left in the dark. For Jesus Christ sees, sees the heart. He does not look unto the person, but he looks unto your soul. What, it is not what you are, it's not what you do. It is what is in your heart. And how many today 
How many souls are doing everything they can to hear the word of God? How many are running, climbing up trees to hear the word of God? And because the word of God today has spread throughout the world, that many have heard of Jesus Christ, but how many are truly seeking for Him, seeking to get to know Him better. And so the Lord is encouraging you today, encouraging you to seek after Him, to put in the effort that you may be blessed. Put in the effort that you may be saved. We have been studying about justification. We have been studying about salvation. No one can save you but yourself. No one can find salvation and grace for you but yourself. Your friends, your family, though, may know, though they may know Christ, cannot save you. You must put in the work. You must have the drive, the willingness to find Christ and listen to Him. Amen. Amen. Verses 5 to 7. And when Jesus came to the place, He looked up and saw Him and said unto Him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they, they all murmured and saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And so Jesus passed by the tree that Zacchaeus climbed and saw him. But we know that Jesus Christ knew that Zacchaeus would be in this tree. So you, you better believe. You believe that Jesus Christ took this way, for He knew that there was a soul there waiting for Him. Jesus Christ knows the thirsty souls, the hungry souls that are after Him. Amen. And He will make sure that His word reaches them. And Jesus Christ went to Zacchaeus, encouraging us, the children of God, to bring the word to wherever he may bring us, wherever he may direct us, for wherever he leads us, there will be souls there to be fed. Souls that need to know Jesus. And so Jesus Christ saw Zacchaeus and gave him instructions. Gave him three instructions to make haste to come down, for he must abide at his house. Amen. Dearly beloved, Jesus Christ is giving you the same instructions today. He is telling you to make haste, to move quickly in listening to his word. To move quickly in obeying His Word. For today is the day of salvation. Today you must choose God. Choose righteousness. Choose salvation. Because tomorrow is not guaranteed. No. As we have learned, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God will not always abide with man, so let us not take chances. But when we feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit... Make haste. Take action on what God is telling you to do. Second, he told him to come down. For Zacchaeus was up on the tree. But this is also God's way of telling him. To humble himself. To come up from that high place and to come down to him. Because that is what it takes to let Jesus into our hearts. We must be humble before Him. Amen. We must, in order to be able to have the fellowship of God, we must humble ourselves. 
That is how we will come to repentance. The salvation is first humility. It is faith, it is humility. To meet Christ halfway. It is not making God meet us all the way. But God must meet us halfway. We must meet God halfway. That in order to do so, if we obey the commandments of Christ, we will be able to accept Him joyfully into our house. In other words, we will be able to joyfully accept Him into our souls. For as we know, Jesus Christ is knocking at on our heart's door. That is a conviction of the Holy Spirit. Knocking, asking to come in. Will you let Jesus in today? Will you make haste? Will you humble yourselves and receive Him joyfully? Because God is looking for willing and joyful souls to worship Him. That is the beauty of free will. But God is not looking to force us to serve Him. But God is looking for those who will willfully serve Him with all of their heart. To be subject unto Him, to humble themselves unto Him, and to give everything to Him. And as we see that those that were looking at Jesus and Zacchaeus, that they did not have the same humility that Jesus is looking for. For they were self-righteous. They were murmuring to themselves, saying that Jesus went to be a guest to a man that is a sinner. Jesus Christ is no respecter of persons. That though this man was a publican, a tax collector, a sinner, Jesus Christ looked for him. Jesus Christ does not care who you are and what you do. He is looking at your soul. Amen. Looking at your heart, looking at your desires. Amen. Are you looking to serve him? Are you looking to get to know Him. Are you humble before God? Because today, though we do not have Jesus Christ in the flesh, asking us to let Him into His home, He does have His children, His ministers going out into the world preaching the gospel. Inviting souls to listen to the Word of God. Inviting souls to invite them into their homes. So today, will you let the Word of God into your home? Amen. That is Jesus Christ speaking to you. That is Jesus Christ Wanting to be led into your soul. That it may be a blessing unto you. Unto your family. Let us not refuse. Refuse the grace, the love. That is, that is on our doors. We hear the knocking. We feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Let us let him in. And the Lord will minister to you if you do. But let us receive God into our homes. Receive God into our souls. God is ministering to each and every one of you today. That He may bless your souls. You are blessed. For you are hearing His word today. Blessed because God is ministering to you. Amen. Amen.
Verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So now, Zacchaeus obeyed the instructions of the Lord. And we kind of skip some steps here. But we know that Zacchaeus truly had faith in Jesus Christ. That Zacchaeus believed in the Word of God, obeyed the commandments, and subjected, him, subjected himself to Christ. And as our aim states, that before restitution, we must have true repentance. Yeah. Because it is only in true repentance, in the changing of our heart by God, in giving us that new being, that our good works will be recognized by God. Because if we make restitution without repentance, it will not be recognized by God. For we are not saved by good works. We are saved by grace. Amen. Saved by faith in Christ. And the word of God says that the deeds of man are as filthy rags in him because of the soul, because there is sin in the soul. But in repentance, in justification, our soul is cleansed, made to be righteous before God, making our works acceptable to God. And so here's the case. By his faith in Jesus Christ, received that, that salvation through repentance. He had faith in Christ. It changed his heart. He was, he is a tax collector, and he may have been greedy, but no longer. No longer for Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus' heart was changed by his true repentance. The Lord directed him what to do. It was the Holy Spirit speaking to Zacchaeus. Jesus Christ did not tell Zacchaeus what to do. Besides to come down to make haste and receive him. Besides that, the Lord did not tell him to restore what he has taken. But it was the Holy Spirit guiding Zacchaeus to do what is right. And we see, we see that immediately he wanted to make things right. To correct the wrongs and the Lord did not have to direct him to give half of his goods to the poor. What a blessing to give this joy to the Lord to see his children. To be giving. To be joyful givers. And it is quite a contrast if you remember the story of the rich young man who desired to follow after Jesus, who told Jesus Christ that since he was a child, he kept the commandments. But Jesus Christ knows hearts. Jesus Christ knew the case's heart. He knew the rich young man's heart. He saw that in the case of the heart, The desire to follow after Christ. Amen. To do good. But in the heart of the rich young man, he saw that he gave importance to his riches. That it was his riches that he was serving. That it was his riches that was his God. And as we know, the rich young man could not give to the poor 
could not forsake and follow Christ. But Zacchaeus here, without prompt from Jesus Christ, gave half to the poor. Amen. Truly, it gives joy to the Lord to see us, to see us act in love, act in His will. For truly, we are all guided by His Holy Spirit to do His will. Amen. And that is what gives God the most pleasure. To see His children obey Him. Obey Him in righteousness. Obey Him in love. And if you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus Christ said. So we see that restitution does not even include charity. Does not include giving. But Zacchaeus gave to the poor. But not, and, of, and of course, he knew that he was deceitful to those he collected taxes from. That he may have lied, cheated, and falsely accused individuals. And so he said if he has taken anything by false accusation, he would restore him fourfold. Not only would he return what he has stolen, but he would multiply it. What a blessing. But that is what we are called to do. Because now that we are finally been reconciled to God, we must do all that we can to reconcile, reconcile ourselves to our fellow man. Yeah. That let us ensure that our hearts are not only right with God, but they are right with man. Amen. That they may see that we have truly received God in our souls. That our hearts have been changed. That we are no longer the old person. But now we are made new in Christ. For without Christ, the case would not have been able to restore anyone. He would have kept the riches to himself. That is the true power of God. It helps us to do what we are not able to do. By His grace, and His sufficient grace to give us the power and the drive, the ability to do things for Him. Amen. 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 Verses 9 and 10. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. So by the faith of Zacchaeus, by his repentance, by his belief in Jesus Christ, he became a blessing not only for himself but to his household. Jesus Christ blessed them with salvation. For truly God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we come to Him in repentance with godly sorrow, with sincerity. And you know that Zacchaeus received Jesus Christ joyfully. For this is what happens when we give ourselves to Christ, when we do not resist Him, but that He may bless us with spiritual grace, spiritual blessings. And we see that He has called Him a high calling, calling Him the Son of Abraham. And dearly beloved, if you think back to the Old Testament, Abraham was God's friend. Abraham was considered to be righteous by God, for he believed in the Word of God. He had faith. 
Because, G because God promised Abraham that he would multiply his seed. That his seed would be as many as the stars in the heavens. And Abraham said, okay, I believe you. And then after God said that to him, he commanded Abraham commanded him to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. And did Abraham doubt God? Abraham, because, because God told him that he would make his seed plenty. How could God make his seed plenty if he was to kill his only son? But, God, but Abraham did not question God. Because that is our duty, dearly beloved. Our duty is to obey God and not to question Him. Amen. So Abraham did so. Took him to the mountain, ready to sacrifice him. But God stopped him. He wanted to see Abraham's faith. And Abraham kept the faith. Believed him. And so the reason why Jesus Christ called Zacchaeus the son of Abraham. For those who will have faith in God are the children of Abraham. The children of faith. And God truly kept our promise to Abraham. To multiply his seed. For they who will have faith in God, believe in his word, are the seed of Abraham. That is us today. And that was the case. He had faith in God. Faith. Faith unto salvation. Faith to do the works. To restore that which is that we which he has taken. And so And also we see the reason why Jesus Christ came. And he has said this plenty of times in the New Testament. He did not come for the righteous. He did not come for the saved. For those who are already in his sheepfold. But Christ came to save them that are lost. Came to save those who do not know him. He is a great shepherd who went out looking for that one sheep that is lost. Leaving the 99 behind. Truly God is no respecter of persons. He cares for the sinners. This is God's love. This is true religion. Man. <clears throat> that God loves sinners. <clears throat> Do not listen to the lies of the devil with his false religion and his false prophets that say God hates sinners. That God hates you. But God does not hate you. God hates the sin. God hates the sin that you do. But he loves <clears throat> your soul. So just as he came to seek Zacchaeus, he is seeking you today. Amen. That he may save you from your sins. That he may bless you and your household with salvation. We see that by the faith of one man, by Zacchaeus, his household was saved. That you will be a blessing to those around you, to those who love you. And we can think back to our last few studies in the prodigal son. Jesus Christ is a father seeking his prodigal children to return. Welcoming them home to those who will listen to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. To make up their mind and act on it and return to God. 
You see, it takes action. The prodigal son took action. Zacchaeus took action. Sought the Lord. Won't you take that action today? Man. <clears throat> Seek the Lord. Receive His salvation. That you may be blessed. Amen. Amen. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 4. Then it shall be because he has sinned and is guilty that he shall restore that which he took violently, violently away or the thing which he has deceitfully gotten or that thing which was delivered to him to keep or, or the lost thing which he, which he found. So we see that the commandment of restitution was instituted from the very beginning. From the old covenant all the way to, to the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all the way to us today. Amen. That we are called to repent. Called to reconcile, reconcile ourselves to God. Because when we sin, we are guilty before God. So before any restitution occurs, as we always say, you must seek repentance. Seek salvation. That you may be made right before God. Because in repentance, in salvation, only then will you be able to do what God requires of you. Because now you will have the grace of Christ. You will now have the Holy Spirit to help you, to guide you to do what is right. And we see that in this verse in Leviticus, that in restitution it is truly everything, that it is anything that is taken, taken that is deceitfully gotten. And it is even said here, anything that is found is to be given back. No such thing as finders keepers in the Bible. Amen. In the life of the Christian. But we are honest. Honest before God. Honest before man. Amen. That we must But we must always make sure that we are right before God. Now we see that in the Old Testament in Leviticus, it is said here that if you read this chapter in Leviticus, Le Leviticus chapter 6, we see that this restitution comes before offering. Comes, sorry, comes after offering, offering to God for, for the sins. So in the Old Testament, the, the Israelites, the people of God were called to make restitution and then come to God for an offering. So they were called to make things right and then offer to God. Mm. But here in the New Testament, in the New Covenant of Jesus Christ, we are called to repentance, called to make ourselves right before God, before anyone else. Because God will not recognize our deeds if we are still in sin. Hmm. God will not recognize because the sin, the sin dirties everything that we do. We, we can never do any righteous deeds before God if we have not repented. So it is, it is turned around in the new covenant. You must first repent and then make restitution. Because in making restitution, my brethren, you're obeying the commandment of Jesus Christ to love your neighbor as yourself. That we would want whatever was taken from us to be given back to us. 
And so let us give back what is not rightfully ours. Let us do all in love, keeping in mind Jesus Christ, keeping in mind His commandments, That we may be acceptable to God. Amen. That He may be pleased in us. That we may find favor in His eyes. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 33. Sorry, Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remember that thy brother has aught against you, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. So here we see the commandment in the new covenant, that this is what is needed to be done before we come to God. <clears throat> that before we come to the altar, before we come before the throne of grace, the mercy seat, before we pray to God, we must be right with everyone around us. <clears throat> there must not be any anger, no malice, no hate in our heart before we come to God in prayer, before we ask Him of anything. We are called to make it everything right. Amen. With our fellow man, with our neighbor, before we make ourselves right before God. Did we not just study that we are to be able to forgive before we can ask for forgiveness? Amen. We are we are to make we are to mend relationships. We are to build bridges before we go to God. So we are reminded that when we come to God in prayer, let us ensure that our heart is right before Him. Amen. There is no sin, no hate, no malice. Because as we have said before, that our sins will hide the face of God from us, that He will not hear, that He will not see us. And so what, is, what does the Lord command us? He commands us that we are to leave the gift before the altar. You are to put aside that prayer you were about to say. And go and reconcile yourself to your brother first. Reconcile yourselves before you come to God. Make things right. And then God will hear you. And so that that should be the easy thing to do. Because we desire to be heard by God. As Zacchaeus said, he humbled himself before God. He sought Him diligently. And so, dearly beloved, today, if you have wronged anyone in your life, may God direct you to make peace, to go with all humility and love, to reconcile yourselves to them. Because maybe there is something that is hindering the river of grace that is flowing to your soul. There is something hindering from God hearing your prayers. So today, seek the Lord and let Him guide you. That He may guard you to make restitution, to restore anything.
Because this is a form of sacrifice. Just as the Israelites were called to make a sacrifice after they made restitution, so we are called to make sacrifice. This is our way of sacrificing to the Lord. We are sacrificing ourselves, sacrificing whatever pride you may have, putting it behind you, and going to all, going with all humility, seeking forgiveness, seeking reconciliation to your neighbor, to God. <clears throat> And God will truly guide you. Guide you to do what is needed. But sometimes it is not possible to make restitution. Maybe the person that you have wronged is far away. Maybe you are unable to reach them. In that case, I advise you to come to God with all humility. To show the Lord that you're willing, willing to make restitution, willing to restore what you have taken, that though it may not be possible, you have God who can hear you, that in all humility, seek Him in forgiveness. Restore yourself to God. And he will forget everything. He will be righteous and just. Because that is what is most needed today. To restore ourselves to God. And salvation. And repentance. To restore what, is take, what we have taken from him. That now it is time to give back. The life. That he has given us. To give it back in service to him. To do his will. To accomplish his gospel. His great commission. So today. Offer yourselves to God. Restore what you have taken from him. For he is the rightful owner. Of our souls. Amen. For he is our creator. He is our God. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 15. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. So the wicked must restore the pledge. The pledge is something of a promise, an agreement. And when man sinned against the Lord, man broke that pledge to worship God in spirit and in truth. Broke the pledge of holiness, of purity, to live a holy life. So all are called to repentance. All are called to serve God. That is the first step to restitution. It is repentance, salvation, forgiveness. We must make ourselves right before God. Before making ourselves right with our neighbor. Because after, only after that we have been saved, that we may be able to do as the chaos did, to give back what he has taken, give back what we have taken from anyone. And then, after that, we may be able to walk in the statutes of life. Walk the Christ walk. For Jesus Christ, the word of God is the word of life. 
So if we are to walk in the statutes of life, we are walking in the Word of God. Walking in His righteousness, we are obeying Him in all that He says. Because it is not just repentance and then we are made to be children of God. It is repentance followed with works. To obey the Word of God, keeping, keeping that pledge. Walking in the Word of God. And of course, as the Lord Jesus Christ said, go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. Without committing iniquity. Jesus Christ did not preach a sin in religion. But Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ preached holiness, righteousness before God. Because uh -huh. now you're made to be new beings. You're now given a new heart. You have corrected your mistakes, corrected your sins. So then go on to perfection. Go on this Christian life without committing iniquity. The Word of God says it, so it is possible. The Bible does not lie. But it is the devil that lies. That says that it is not possible to live a holy life. But dearly beloved, it is possible. Amen. Jesus Christ proved it. His disciples proved it. And God will prove it to you that you are able to do it. Amen. Because in doing so, you will live, you will have life. As Jesus Christ said, I have come to give them life to give them life more abundantly. Amen. To give you spiritual life, to make you alive before God, yeah. and to give you eternal life. Because in iniquity and sin, you will die. You abide in death, in eternal death. So let us keep the commandments of God. But if you love Him, keep His commandments. Every single one of it, we cannot... We cannot leave one commandment undone. But let us be thorough and complete in obeying God in all His commandments. Let us restore what we have taken. But most of all, let us restore ourselves to God. Repent and forsake your sins. And be saved, just as the chaos did. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen. Dear Father in Heaven, we thank you today Amen. for the blessings that you have given to us, for the encouragement and the strength of our souls. Father, we thank you that you have shed light on all of your commandments, that we may be able to do all of it and not fall short. And Father, we thank you for the guidance of your Holy Spirit and his convictions, that we may know what to do, that we may be able to make restitution, to restore anything that we have taken. That Father, may you continue to guide your children, to give us the wisdom, to know, to know what to do, to know who to reconcile with, to be always humble before you. Amen. And Father, we pray. We pray for the lost, for those who you have come to seek. We pray, my dear Lord, that you may help them find salvation, you may help them find forgiveness in you, that they may humble themselves and accept you into their life accept you into their heart. For my dear Father, if they do, you will bless them. And you will help them just as you did with Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that we may always be humble before you. Mm -hmm. That we may have love for, for our neighbors. And that before we come to you in prayer, that we may always be right before everyone and right before you. Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for all that you do. 
Just remember praying in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.